Let us understand what is Islamic banking and finance. Before that, we need to have clarity on what is a bank, how a bank works. Let us start with a basic question. What do we do with money? We can either save it or spend it. If you have money and you want to save it, what is a good place? A bank. If you have no money and you want to spend it, then what is a good place to get money? A bank. So, in either of the cases, a bank plays an important role. A bank is a financial intermediary that accepts deposits and channels those deposits into lending activities. So you can see people depositing money on one side, and then on the other side there are people who are approaching the bank to seek funding. Both the activities of deposit taking and providing funds are based on interest. What it means is that a depositor would receive fixed interest on his deposits and the fund seeker will have to pay fixed percentage of interest on the money borrowed. And the difference of these two interest rates becomes bank's profit. Now the question is, how different is an Islamic bank from an interest-based bank? Islamic law prohibits any excess or premium charged on money lent. Paying interest and charging interest both are not acceptable. Under the principles of Islamic finance, money is viewed as only a medium of exchange and a measure of value. Money is a tool to measure the value of all commodities, and it is not a commodity in itself. So the question is, how will an Islamic bank work without giving or charging interest? How will it make a profit? How will it provide return to its depositors? How will it provide financing to its customers? In a way, how will an Islamic bank work? An Islamic bank plays two roles. One as a partner, where it invests the funds of the depositors in Sharia-compliant business ventures, and provides them a return on a profit and loss-sharing basis. And the second as a trader, where the Islamic bank purchases assets, bears the risk of ownership, and then either sells or leases out the assets to the customers who require financing. Let us now understand what are the principles on which Islamic banks work. In Islamic law, which is called as Sharia, there are two primary sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. Quran is a divine book and word of Allah revealed as a final revelation and guidance to mankind. While the Sunnah refers to traditions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that include his sayings, actions, and tacit approvals. The basic principles related to business transactions and trade can be interpreted based on the circumstances provided such interpretation does not contradict with the Quran and the Sunnah. This unique feature or flexibility of Islam makes it relevant to every generation. Now, let us see who provides guidance to an Islamic bank on Sharia. It is a Sharia board. Sharia board is an independent body that consists of Sharia scholars. Each Islamic bank is required to appoint an independent Sharia board which will advise them on how the Islamic banking activities be done in a Sharia compliant manner. The Sharia board checks whether the Sharia guidelines are implemented effectively by the Islamic bank and a regular Sharia audit is conducted to ensure this. Now, who are the customers of an Islamic bank? It can be individuals, companies, financial institutions and governments. What are the needs of the customers which are being fulfilled by the Islamic bank? The saving needs and the spending needs. Islam provides guidelines for a comprehensive system of life and it also provides guidelines on economics, business and commerce. Islam gives a complete model of an economic system According to the principles of Islamic economic system, Allah is the ultimate owner of the wealth 
and resources available to human beings in the world. He, Allah, has created humans as his representative on earth and asked to manage and benefit from this wealth and resources in the way prescribed by him. Islam strongly discourages idleness that results in poverty. In fact, it encourages the economic activities, trade and business within the permitted boundaries. Wealth cannot be accumulated and hoarded in few hands. It needs to be exchanged amongst individuals through trade and mutual consent. There is a due share of every individual who lacks the ability in the surplus wealth earned by an able individual. This due share is transferred to them in the form of inheritance. Will, zakah, and sadaqah. One is accountable for one's earning and expenditure to Allah. The concept of debt plays an important role in the financial industry. Let us see how Islam views debt. Islam views debt as an obligation. Involvement in debt is generally discouraged in Islam, except in the condition where it becomes a necessity. One cannot take debt to fulfill false pride and greed. Another important point is that the one who enters into a debt-based transaction should make sure that one has the potential ability or capability to repay in accordance with the terms and conditions of the debt arrangement. Another important point which you need to be aware of is about speculation. Speculative transaction leads to uncertainty, which is known as Gerar in Islamic jurisprudence. So any speculative transaction is not permissible in Sharia. For example, options, finance, futures, and hedges. These are speculative financial instruments, which are traded in conventional financial market. So, within this Islamic economic philosophy, people are free to adopt any Sharia permitted source that can satisfy their economic needs. Based on this philosophy, the Sharia scholars and the Islamic economists of every age have been developing the Islamic finance model. Let us have a look at the evolution of Islamic finance. If we go back to the history, you will see that the Islamic finance and financial institutions evolved and developed since the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from the cities of Mecca and Medina. The central treasury, Baitul Mal, Zakat, and taxes like land tax and poll tax, etc., were successfully operated during that period. In addition, there have been a few developments, such as the use of bills of exchange and checks. The traces of Islamic finance practices could be found in various Islamic finance civilizations between 750 AD and 1900 AD. However, the modern development of Islamic finance began in 19th century, when Muslim scholars called for a financial system within the Sharia norms. Various theories and theoretical models were proposed by the Islamic economists, academicians, and Sharia scholars which further resulted in the emergence of Islamic banking and financial institutions. At present, there are more than 200 Islamic financial institutions that include Islamic banks, investment companies, takaful insurance, regulatory and rating agencies, which operate throughout the globe.